so my name is Roy van der Berg. Um, I'm uh, working in the Netherlands. Uh, I'm based over there. I uh, worked for over seven years at the Port Authority of Rotterdam um, and worked on uh, uh, intermodal hinterland transport uh, projects. Uh, and since uh, 2016, I'm a self-employed consultant working on uh, uh, yeah, similar projects related to, to port and hinterland intermodal transport. Uh, and uh, next to that, I'm also uh, giving some lectures now and then uh, about this topic. So um, yeah, some, some different uh, projects about uh, intermodal transport, uh, uh, terminal development. Um, yeah, so different, uh, different angles uh, in that, yeah. Cool, so I know you're an uh, intermodal uh, transport specialist particularly. So I'm wondering, just to speak to that area, um, how that has been adversely affected by the elephant in the room, the COVID-19 outbreak, and which modes have been kind of mostly affected between like road, river, rail, and why maybe you can speak to that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, to be honest, I only have a, say the, the perspective on, on what's happening in the Netherlands. I'm not so sure what's, what's happening uh, uh, outside of Europe uh, in that respect. But when we look for uh, transport uh, to and from the port of Rotterdam, um we see that uh well well road transport uh, decreased uh, a bit um they had some uh some some uh drops uh i think what i what i read was around uh, 30 percent so that's quite uh quite the impact of course um on the other hand we see also uh some some drops for um the volumes in in the inland shipping so barge transport uh, that's a little bit less, um, but uh, they, they are also able to manage these uh, these uh, uh, decreasing volumes, as they can be quite flexible also with uh, the the usage of the the barges. Um, with rail transport, you see that uh, to some areas, uh, like for example, we had some uh, uh, connections uh, to to China, for example. Well, that that stopped to some extent. Uh, to some Areas like Poland, for example, you see that uh, uh, there even was an increase in the, the amount of round trips. Uh, but for example, to other uh, industries, for example, in, in southern part of Germany, you see that uh, the amount of rail connections decreased. So the, the, the round trips uh, went from, say, uh, three to five uh, round trips normally to, to one or two in a week. Um, so it, it, it depends a bit on, on the kind of activities where the, the containers or the, the, yeah, the activities um, where the containers need to go to. Uh, so if you have a lot of industry, like for example, uh, uh, the automotive uh, that stopped, of course. So then you see a reduction uh, in, in, in transport to those areas. Uh, but um, more food related uh, cargo, that's, uh, yeah, that, that of course continues. And, and sometimes even increases. So uh, yeah, there we see uh, some differences. You spoke a bit to, to, about the different geographies that have been affected. Um, maybe you could speak to which ones have been have felt this impact the most, and kind of what contributes to that. Um, yeah, uh, what I said. So uh, the, the the industry, the automotive industry, which is uh, quite large in in Germany, uh, felt of course uh, a huge impact uh, of this crisis. Uh, so there you see that that there's less volume coming via the port of Rotterdam, but also via other ports who, who supply those uh, those uh, industries. Uh, so you see less uh, volumes going to that uh, areas, and and vice versa, of course. Um, uh, and yeah, mainly the uh, the the food related industries, uh, which are in the Netherlands, but also uh, abroad. Th those things uh, just uh, continue. Um, and I can imagine that uh, the, the, the more, uh, say, uh, the, the chemical industry, not so much the, the basic uh, refineries, because, of course, uh, there's less demand for oil. But uh, I can imagine that other uh, chemical products might still be uh, uh, in, in need for, for a production of, of plastics or whatever. So uh, those things just uh, remain relatively stable. Uh, Okay, and how do you see the situation developing in the near term? So, like for example, we have a lot of uh, kind of importer exporters here uh, in attendance, and they'll be interested to know from your perspective when you can kind of see this fluctuation start to normalize a little bit. Um, 
yeah that i think that's uh, um independent on on when economies are opening up again uh, and and when people can can yeah uh, become more active so to say um mm. because a lot is it's dependent on on whether or not we can buy stuff or or what we can do outside uh so so in the netherlands yeah we see that it, it's slowly opening up and then uh they, they try to be careful with it so mm. Uh, I can imagine that uh, within uh, two months, say when everyone is is a bit, uh, relatively sort of back in business, uh, then then it might pick up again uh, as it was before. Uh, yeah. But also, you see that things are changing, right? So uh, I can imagine that companies are also looking into possibilities to have to source products uh, uh, within Europe instead of Asia, and then you get different flows. So. Uh, but also that takes time so mm-hmm. probably uh you see you will see that the 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 their their standard supply chains will pick up again and then uh, because now the supply from asia is is is, is normal or is possible but yeah. uh the demand just dropped back a bit in in europe so yeah when that's again in uh um on the uh, sort of level which is normal then you probably see that uh, that these things stabilize yeah sure and then when you speak to, towards more of the long term let's say so you talked about how things uh, you know would stabilize do you see things getting back to normal as they were before or do you see some things that will uh, will change forever in, the, in these terms um well i can imagine as said that that uh, for some uh, supply chains, there will be some some changes where uh, to, to, that companies are going to review whether or not it's uh, necessary to to uh, source from from Asia or from South America or wherever, uh, and and try to do that uh, a little bit closer by, so you have a lot more uh, secured supply. Hmm. Uh, on the other hand, um, I can also imagine that. Um, Things change due to the fact that, um, uh, uh, or that you you have a different supply setup and and uh, work with a little bit more uh, stock uh, close by. So instead of mm. uh, uh, just in time management, you work with a little bit more buffers. Uh, so that could also result in uh, in more demand for warehousing. Mm. Uh, and this is something which is already quite booming in the netherlands you see a lot of warehouses in the netherlands and 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 these developments continue uh, and and they are becoming bigger and bigger so there's also a societal uh, discussion on whether or not this is something we want um but i can imagine that those trends could continue if if we are going to work with a bit more stock uh, across the the globe Cool. Uh, I just had a question from uh, Vikram Patil. Uh, do you think that due to reduced volumes, the road transport rates from Netherlands to Germany will be lower than usual? Um, uh, well, yeah, uh, that could be. Uh, I'm I'm not sure uh, how, the, uh, because I can also imagine that in the Netherlands, for example, we have a lot of uh, also uh, truck drivers from abroad. Uh, and maybe they are now also going back to 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 their home countries, uh, and so there's also there might also be less uh, supply of of transport. So I could imagine that uh, the 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 rates uh, might remain on a stable level. Uh, on the other hand, you also see a lot of um, uh, price reductions in in the in the fuel. So that could also have an impact, of course, on the on the rates of of uh, road transport. Yeah. Cool. And what, in what, uh, just speaking more towards the kind of like, like the long-standing effects that the outbreak might have, uh, in what ways do you envision the virus outbreak would push for further digitalization and transformation of the transport and logistics industry? Um, yeah, well, we of course now get a, a lot of uh, experience with uh, working uh, in a digital way. Uh, mm. And you also see this in, uh, uh, in, the, in the different uh, logistics sectors. Um, uh, so there's less uh, direct communication or, or face-to-face uh, contact, uh, and a lot more is going digital. So can can imagine that this gives a, a lot of uh, for a big push uh, to to go digital. Um, what we also see, for example, is that uh, in the Netherlands we are um, 
uh, developing uh, different standards uh, for paperless transport, for example, for example, like the the, the electronic CMR uh, for for road transport, uh, which is offered by multiple companies. Um, but but yeah, when in in these kind of situations, you are going to to uh, investigate whether or not this is uh, uh, possible, and I can imagine that it also gives a push for these kind of uh, um, applications and and the usage of those things. Yeah. And in what uh, what are the areas in which you believe the significant leaps must be achieved to bring our industry into the kind of twenty first century? So, what specific areas really need a boost? Um. I can. Uh, I I think that that across the 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 industry, there's still a lot to gain. Yeah. Um, and um, there there's probably not sort of specific uh, 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 stakeholder to to say uh, that that they need to improve. Mm. Um, but I, what I would say more in general is that we need to standardize things in order to make it possible, uh, uh, better possible for everyone to, to uh, uh, use those more digital ways of working. And, and that's sometimes what we're, what we're uh, lacking. And what we see in the Netherlands is those things are, are um, uh, under development or offered, uh, like for example, um, uh, a sort of standardized way to, to, to get access to data, uh, which is uh, done via iShare or uh, a common language to, to share information about uh, the, the location and the status of a transport via the uh, open trip model. Um, and those things are now, uh, which these are already uh, available for a few years, but I can imagine that those kind of things uh, now uh, 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 are, are put in practice a lot more due to the fact that we are now working in this different uh, way uh, now. And then um, how can digital platforms and tools play a role in aiding the recovery within the logistics sector and beyond? Um, well, I, I think digital platforms will make uh, the, um, uh, the access to information uh, uh, a lot easier. So um, in that respect, it could be a sort of uh, easy stepping stone towards uh, getting uh, all your data together and, and, and start working in a, in a digital way. Um, and, and you see that those kind of things are becoming uh, uh, more and more easy to use, mm -hmm. uh, user friendly, uh, just like what we already have in, in the, the for the consumers. Uh, so yeah, I, I think the, the challenge before was to get your data on the platform, and I, that for, for some areas that's still a big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but also that is developing uh, uh, in a fast pace. So I can imagine that uh, when it's working uh, well, uh, that this step is, uh, is made. And then if you get more experience with these kind of things, uh, probably companies will also focus on, on other uh, uh, applications as well. So you, a lot of your background, you're involved in uh, many projects in this kind of area of digital transformation and tools and stuff. And I wonder if you could speak to some of the projects that you've been directly involved with, like what were they were and kind of what benefits they provided to the industry. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so one of the, the the first projects I was actually involved in was a, a project called Inland Links, which was a website uh, where uh, we as a port authority uh, tried to give uh, insight on where uh, in the Netherlands, but also in Belgium and Germany, uh, the um, intermodal uh, terminals are for container transport, uh, just to give uh, shippers, freight forwarders insight on on, um, uh, on which destinations they could use intermodal transport and what kind of services there were available. Um, and, and the interesting thing in this is that, uh, that this was all already started like uh, over 10 years ago and um, uh, it was fairly simple and we only provided the information on that website but now you see that things are progressing and 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 this this website inland links is uh, uh, has become part of a, a new uh, sort of uh, tool which is called navigate uh, where you also get uh, insights on on the the sea uh, connections uh, and also for other ports so it's it's becoming global and more information is is 
going to be integrated in, in, in this platform. Uh, and that's actually what you see right now, right? There's, so the, um, things are becoming integrated. You get better overview and transparency of, of what's, uh, what's available. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you still have difficulties on, on discussions on whether or not you, you need to be able to book on, on such kind of platforms or that you need to use other platforms for that and how you integrate the, those kind of things or not. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it, the interesting thing here is that it, it takes a lot of time and um, you, you need to have a sort of starting point and then companies are saying, okay, well, we see now the, the options via Rotterdam for intermodal transport, for example, which was the case with the uh, inland links. Mm. Um, but then they say, yeah, uh, we, do, we not only ship via Rotterdam, but we also want insights for the connections via Antwerp and and then also the other uh, comp- or uh, ports in the in, in Europe, for example. Um, so that's that's the next step, and then you need to think: okay, we as a port of Rotterdam, you are uh, financing so, the, such kind of things, and then yeah, do you want to have that, or do you want to use that as a sort of promotion tool? So you need to also think about uh, what's what your added value and and how are you going to differentiate yourself from other ports and 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 what's your position in that um so so yeah that's uh those things develop but what you see right now is that that yeah more and more is becoming it's becoming integrated with other uh, areas and then it's becoming uh more interesting of course uh, for others to use so yeah mm. And then can you speak to the kind of benefits that were realized by shippers, let's say, uh, through these kind of integrations? Uh, well, you, you get more insight. So it's 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 easier to find information uh, where maybe before you needed to, to contact many uh, organizations or, or uh, go to different websites uh, to, to find your information. You can now just easily find it on your own, uh, on, on one location. Hmm. Uh, and and I think that's a bit uh, the same uh, as as for Kogo Port that you yeah you see that uh, uh, the the different options uh, on on in one place and and uh, that that saves a lot of time so so that's uh, a, a clear benefit of course and then yeah so speaking towards that maybe what are some exciting up and coming digital tools or services that you see emerging in the industry right now. Um, <clears throat> well, you see uh, the so the, so the yeah uh, the the big sort of uh, uh, venture capital uh, companies, uh, uh, for example, like Cocoport, but also Flexport, uh, uh, Uber, they, yeah, they're all uh, going into the market and, and, and have funding to, to develop. And I think that's important to, to, uh, to see because um, when, you go, when you look to container transport specifically, um, um, and and then the, uh, this industry, uh, it's I would say it's a bit of a niche market. Uh, mm. If you would look from a, from a global perspective, it's it's not. Uh, but in in a lot of cases, you need to approach it in a a more regional or local uh, way. So then in, in then it's a a lot more like a niche market, and then it's probably uh, not directly interesting. Uh, for companies to invest in the, in in this, um, but what you see right now is that multiple companies are are truly doing this, uh, heavily investing in 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 services, uh, in, in digital services, and I think that's what um, what the industry needs, uh, and not only from from large companies but also smaller companies in the Netherlands, like for example U-turn, uh, where you can uh, have more efficient uh, uh, road transport uh, by combining. Uh, uh, orders or, or other kinds of uh, uh, demands, uh, or, or aggregating uh, cargo in order to have uh, a, a high utilization of a truck or or a barge. Mm. Um, so, so you see that uh, local initiatives, uh, global initiatives, which are good, and these things really help uh, the industry to to go uh, uh, a bit more digital because companies. Uh, uh, individual companies, uh, logistics service providers, uh, or, or shippers, they can't do it only by themselves. Yeah, you need to have more uh, companies uh, doing this. Yeah. So yeah, you spoke a bit about uh, Cocoport. I know on your website you speak about how you helped Cocoport enter the EU market. So I wonder if you can speak a bit about the process of helping a digital logistics tool enter a new market, 
kind of what the you know what the blockers were, what the accelerators were, different things like that. Um, well, I, I tried to to introduce Cogo Port a bit uh, on on uh, on, uh, on uh, transport companies and and, and some, some shippers and freight forwarders. Um, and what you see is that it's new, right? So so they don't know it, and um, or they they didn't know it, and um, then then yeah, you have a sort of you need to understand what what it can offer uh and then if they want to use it they probably need some time to test it and then and, and that's also what you see for example when you want to move your container via barge instead of road it takes a lot of time to to understand what what will be the impact um and 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 how you can organize it uh for example because you have got already existing contracts and you can't uh, cancel those directly it takes time before you can change to a new setup mm. uh, and this is also something you you see in these cases right so if you have already contracts with a, a shipping line uh, it's probably not that easy to just stop that contract and 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 uh, then book via another way um, so so it's also just uh, investigating what it is and and how you can apply those elements or, or the whole setup in your own operation mm. um, and th yeah that's uh, uh, that takes time so so those are uh, yeah the things you you need to uh, need to discuss of course and what are the kind of perceptions in general uh, in terms of like digital transformation and new tools and things on the market are people kind of open to these ideas initially or were they somewhat reserved and kind of comfortable in their traditional kind of modes of uh, operating I think in general, the at least in the Netherlands, uh, the logistics industry is quite conservative, so they're they're a bit hesitant to to just step into a new uh, 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 possibility. Mm. Uh, and and I can imagine because if you have a, a, a already smooth running operation, uh, and you you have a new opportunity, it's not that you directly use it because there's a risk, right, of, of, mm. of failure and and customers are. are uh, uh, and not not getting what they want, so um, yeah, I can imagine that you're not directly into that. But uh, um, and next to that, not every company has the 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 time to to investigate new services. Hmm. Uh, so that sometimes needs to come from one person or or a few. And and uh, if there's not so much time to investigate what are the possibilities, then it's also uh, difficult to to make the transition right. So. Um, yeah, that's it, it. It takes time. It takes time. It takes time, or maybe it takes something like uh, an overwhelming global crisis as well to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make people worry. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's because yeah, th this gives a push. Now we have to, uh, and and then you get direct experience, and and you also see that it works. So mm. uh, I can imagine that in a lot of cases, this this will 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 stay and and further develop. And in some cases, it might not. But uh, yeah, yeah. in general, um, we have a good IT infrastructure in the Netherlands, uh, a lot of services, uh, software providers. So I can imagine that that there's al already uh, so much in place which which works quite well. That uh, yeah, this this will give it a boost, definitely. Well, we have a couple of questions from some of the attendees, so I might just pose a few of those to you. From Nikhil, uh, SMEs expect digitalized freight tools. How long do you think it will take for digitalization of freight transport, especially in multimodal freight? Um, um, yeah, that, uh, that's difficult to say. Um, it, it really depends on, on, on the companies, uh, and, and you mm -hmm. see, uh, some companies are already quite uh, quite advanced in, uh, in this respect, and others are still using uh, plain, uh, basic uh, Excel files to to do their planning and and and, and uh, administer their their operations. So um, uh, there's a lot of differences between companies, and uh, it probably uh, is is related to the size of a company uh, so the, the smaller the companies are the the, the more basic it is uh, because there's less mm -hmm. money to invest in these kind of things um, on the other hand you see now also uh, software providers offering uh, 
off the shelf or plug of play uh, uh, software packages, which can easily be be installed uh, mm -hmm. and used. So then, and and also the the it's probably not that expensive. So then it's it's quite easy to make this step, or it's becoming more easy. Let let's let, put it like that. Mm -hmm. um, so so I can imagine that within the next two or three years uh, we we will have uh, made a big step and and will also be on a certain level that we are better able to to also integrate with each other uh, throughout the chain uh, which is also still a, a, a big difficulty mm. awesome and then uh, from uh, they say a handicrafts is export and import for non-essential goods open in line lock countries in Europe uh, uh yeah I would. <laughs> uh yeah yeah it's, it's quite open yeah. brilliant and then uh rashmi dio asks what uh are the effects on saudi arabian exports this is a specific one i guess uh exports to europe uh sorry i was just going uh no oh, okay yeah i see um I, I really don't know. Uh, mm. Yeah, that it's. I don't know if we have a lot of exports from uh, from the Netherlands or from Europe to to Saudi Arabia. Um, mm. I can imagine that that some food stuff or so so fruits, vegetables, or maybe flowers are going in that direction. Mm. Uh, maybe some some other um, consumable products, but yeah, I, I don't know. What, no problem. And then uh, Rahul asks, how is product price fluctuations and transportation charges and other costs being affected by the coronavirus uh, pandemic? Maybe you could speak to that, kind of what factors influence price fluctuations and transportation charges? Um, I think uh, the, on the one hand, you have uh, the demand. Um, so, so that, of course, uh, steers uh, the, the fluctuations. Um, uh, so, so on the, I think, um, as indicated before, some some demand has dropped, some still exists. So, so in that respect, there 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 are some changes, but also some things, some some elements stay the same. Um, and there are also restrictions to to what is possible. Um, but that's mainly in the service area. So, like for example, uh, we're not we're we can't go on holiday right now, or not abroad mm -hmm. at least. Uh, so, so that influences the um, uh, the amount of of, of traveling uh, by plane. Uh, and I can also imagine that that also influences uh, the the prices of uh, of flights uh, or or of, of of freight that needs to be transported by airplane. Uh, mm -hmm. How that really goes, I, I, I really don't know, but uh, or, or at least I, I don't know on a, on a global level. Yeah. But I can imagine that it definitely has an impact. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then I'll just bring it back to me a small bit to uh, digital transformation. From your perspective, what are the unique challenges of digital transformation in the logistics industry specifically? Um, as, as I said before, uh, it's a niche market, so uh, there's, uh, yeah, you need to have uh, 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 companies offering the services, um, so, so that's one. Uh, I think this is, uh, the, a business to business environment is, is different than uh, a business to consumer environment. Uh, as consumers, we are already uh, very uh, aware and use it to a large extent, but uh, when you use digital uh, services in a business-to-business -business environment, it is different, or it's at least experienced in a different way. Uh, mm. So that's one. So you need to have the the, the services, and uh, and um, but on the other hand, um, I think we also need to have a little bit more standardization uh, because now it's difficult to integrate uh, different elements, uh, different services uh exchange information with each other uh it's still uh in the industry um edi is used to a large extent uh there yeah. are a lot of legacy systems uh with big companies uh so that that uh, requires a lot of investments to connect with with uh, the different players but um uh 
Um, yeah, if we can have, for, uh, for example, the APIs as a standard to connect with each other, that that will uh, facilitate or, or fasten the development to to a large extent. Um, but yeah, that that also requires uh, uh, knowledge and 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 so so new standards on on how we work with each other. Uh, and and yeah, you also need to have a certain amount of companies that use these kind of new standards in order to get the rest on board. Uh, and if there are still, say, uh, the the uh, companies lagging behind, which uh, didn't uh, digitalize at all yet, uh, but these and and when we would have these new standards, then they can make a big step at once, right? So then you can uh, have a large uh change in the industry um so if we if we would have these standards in place uh, that would make it easier and and that would really push also the digitalization to the next level i i would say awesome and i actually just got a good question uh from the chat so i might pose it to you again is what about data security issues when we use third-party software uh that yeah that's that's of main importance of course um mm -hmm. and and you see that um also, the Netherlands now uh, we uh, there's a, a, a research project going on about cybersecurity on what the the, the levels are of uh, the security levels are within companies, how companies approach cybersecurity, um, and and you see that 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 differs a lot between companies, but it's also on a relatively low level. Um, you, companies not often doesn't don't know how. Uh, to, to make them uh, um, uh, how to make, uh, to be secure in the, in this respect, mm. what what the uh, uh, what the difficult difficulties are, uh, and next to that you have of course uh, access to data which you want to share with with third parties, uh, and uh, so and and with whom you won't won't want or don't want to share information. So you need to have the authorization, authentication, and those kind of things, and um, uh, in the Netherlands, we are working on, on those kind of uh, uh, standards. Uh, for example, iShare, which I mentioned before, um, and and I think yeah that that helps to make it uh, 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 more secure. Um, and 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 uh, so so we are aware of of the the, the challenges in this, uh, uh, but there are also there are solutions for for overcoming these uh, these difficulties. Yeah. And then uh, Aspran asks, how do you think about the role of synchro modality in these days? Is it going to help recovery or will it delay the recovery? Um, I think um, uh, I don't think it, it's going to delay the recovery. Um, but I think it, it a synchro model transfer could get a push from this because of the fact that we are going to work in a more digitalized way and share more information with each other. And that's actually what you need in order to make synchromodal transport happen. So you need to have an overview of what's what's available, which kind of services, uh, which you can use uh, on a certain moment in time. Um, and um, there need to be different services also in place, which you can use. Um, so this situation might might make it a bit more difficult to, difficult to use because of the fact that some services are are, are less, so less connections to, to uh, certain destinations. So then it's more difficult to use this. Uh, but on the other hand, if we're going to communicate about the services in a more digital way, then it will become easier to aggregate the, this data and then also plan in a more synchro modal way. Awesome. Um, I might switch the, the gears a little bit. I know you have a, a keen interest in sustainability. So uh, how do you see sustainability industry currently? Uh, where are we now in terms of sustainability and what's being done to improve? Um, I think sustainability is still uh, uh, something in this, uh, within the logistics industry uh, to some extent uh, uh, um, uh, sort of in the uh, uh, don't get enough attention. Uh, let's put it like that. Um, mm. The focus is always on cost. So, so logistics or transport is, is cost driven. Um, so if uh, a more sustainable solution would um, 
would be available, uh, then it's in most cases it's only used when it's uh, cheaper, or at least when it doesn't cost more. Um, mm. So, so that's uh, that's a difficulty. And then if you look to uh, 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 optimization projects, uh, then the side effect is that it's uh, more sustainable because uh, you get uh, more efficient operations and, and then it's promoted like oh this is a sustainability project um, but I guess uh, we are now slowly looking into more and more uh, options of, of other types of fuel electrification hydrogen those kind of things mm -hmm. uh, and that can really give a big push on, on becoming more sustainable because um, uh, this is important due to the fact that the transport industry has such a large share of, of CO2 emissions. So uh, something needs to be done in order to, to um, uh, uh, reach our goals in, in reducing uh, CO2 emissions worldwide. And um, not every fuel is possible for every uh, um, uh, mode of transport, mm. uh, but we need to see what per type of mode, what, what, we, uh, what we can organize. And, uh, now we can and then I wonder, do you think, because um, it seems to me like with the current situation that sustainability people are going to I pay less attention to it in the near term as, uh, you know, they worry more about costs and saving costs. So do you think that it's going to take a bit of a backseat for the, at least the next kind of number of months while we're in recovery? Uh, yeah, especially due to the fact that you have uh, a reduction in the fuel price. So uh, gasoline uh, uh, is reduced, of course, due uh, to the... the, the yeah. Yeah, overproduction of, of oil. Mm. Uh, so that will reduce that price. And then the, the, the gap between more sustainable fuels will, will become bigger again. Mm. Uh, and, and I think we, uh, if we want to really make a big step in this, and, and this will, will probably not be done in, in, in the short term, I would guess, uh, is that you need to get a sort of pricing on CO2 emissions. Uh, because then you can make a, a real difference in 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 in, in fuel prices, mm. um, but that needs to be substantial, and you need to also agree on that on on a global scale, or at least a European scale. Otherwise, it will not, it will not happen. And and those kind of discussions are really difficult and and take a lot of time. So, but on the short one, I, I expect that um, yeah, due to the fact that. Uh, fuel will will become cheaper again. That the step towards other types of fuel, which which will have probably the largest impact on on uh, emission reductions, uh, will take yeah will take more time. Yeah. That's really interesting. That's the first time I've actually heard someone pose the idea that the uh, huge reduction in fuel cost, you know, would adversely affect sustainability. But it makes total sense. So that's really uh really interesting. That's the first time I'm hearing that. So it's yeah. all. Uh, and then how does the digitalization aid sustainability then? So how could that uh, mitigate some of these uh, some of these issues? Um, yeah, as I said before, with uh, we with digitalization, you can you can optimize processes, right? So uh, um, you can maybe have more efficient routings or, or uh, bundle cargo, or maybe when using synchromodal transport, you can uh, use the most efficient mode of transport. Uh, uh, um, when when that's possible, so um, it can positively influence uh, sustainability. I would say because you can uh, have more efficient operations, and and that uh, also affects the, the the amount of emissions. Um, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Actually, uh, maybe you could speak a bit more to how AI or algorithm based uh, you know cargo routing optimization can improve sustainability. Because I think that's a really interesting topic. Yeah. Um, I think due to the fact that volumes uh, increase so much uh, uh, the last few decades that um, for planners, uh, for individual uh, persons, uh, it's it's very difficult to to further optimize operations uh, uh, based on on what they can um, um, uh, do. With the current uh, in the current situation, so if you have so much data, you need to put that in a in a in a database, and then have AI or or other kinds of um, uh, analytic tools run through your data and and see where optimizations are possible. Uh, and and I'm sure that that if you uh, use those kind of 
tools that 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 you can find even more um, uh, efficiencies in 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 logistics than than what we see right now. Um, so yeah, that that will definitely benefit also uh, sustainability. Uh, yeah. Awesome. And then uh, I wonder if you kind of see any opportunities arising for positive change as a result from the the current outbreak. I know a lot of the news and uh, stuff is quite negative and quite bad, but will there be some forced opportunities for positive change? Um, yeah. Well, so so what I said before, uh, the, uh, we are now used to to uh, to using digital services uh, and 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 uh, working in different ways. Uh, so so that will push this uh, further, and and then you get say. Um, uh, yeah, that people get more experience on on what's what's available on the market, and 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 uh, I can imagine that that it also triggers a bit on uh, for people to to learn what what is even uh, more uh, available in the market, uh, like yeah. AI, which is sort of new term, but it's already existing for a long time. Um, and and yeah, if if you want to go to uh, to duck in this a bit deeper, then then yeah, it's uh, it's doable because you now also see that uh, webinars are going all over the place. Yeah. Uh, so it's easy to connect. Um, it 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 doesn't cost a lot of time if you're not interested at a certain point in time. You just uh, stop your uh, or quit the webinar. Um, so so it's it's um, maybe even easier to get uh, access to 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 new, this kind of information. And and I can imagine that. Um, yeah, this this will make it easier for a lot of people to uh, to see how this can be, how you can get this a, a step further uh, and further digitalize and 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 improve your operations, but also improve your uh, your uh, your footprint or reduce your footprint, so to say. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's another thing. True, that a good point that I haven't thought about is that the sharing of information now is ramped up big time since. Uh, this whole lockdown you're right there's webinars there experts are giving their opinions and it's uh it's actually really really good to see actually that the expert uh, opinion is being given so freely and uh for example here with you i mean it's fantastic to <laughs> be able to tap into the knowledge you have so uh thanks for coming on board and i wonder also will the uh some of the positive opportunities be people focusing more on optimization to reduce cost so will you know supply chains become more efficient and a lot of the kind of hopefully the wasteful stuff will be cut off yeah, yeah, and I I, um, I work also uh, or as a at a, as a yeah so we call it a project developer, but uh, at an organization called Smartboard where we try to uh, uh, develop research projects for for the for the companies in the port of Rotterdam to to improve mm. their business to become more competitive, uh, and and we try to do that by uh, connecting to to universities to uh, to scientific research. Um, and that's also something a lot of companies are not that uh, sort of uh, uh, eager in in doing. Yes, let's go to a university. There, of course, there are a few companies where where you have mainly it's based on people's interest to 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 connect to universities and and utilize the 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 knowledge which is there. Mm. Um, but I think um, the 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 yeah also with with um, the developments of of of, of new uh, uh, algorithms also at universities but also other kinds of research which is taking place at universities um, which might not be directly be able to apply in, in practice but if you have some some knowledge about this and uh, it, it it triggers right it, it uh, you start thinking on, on how how you can improve your own operations and uh, smartport tries to connect uh, with uh, the, the the universities with the companies but especially what and they try to do is to to uh, translate the the or or give back the knowledge developed at the universities to the companies, mm. um, and this can be done via webinars, but also via other uh, means, of course. Uh, but connecting these things uh, is is really important. So so um, yeah, what you said, more knowledge is becoming available, and it can be in different ways. Uh, but uh, what I want to stress here is that uh, there is already a lot of knowledge available. At universities, 
but sometimes it's not uh, discovered yet. So uh, uh, I think uh, we all need to uh, try to look at that uh, maybe a bit more. So we also uh, see what kind of opportunities we could get from there. Yeah. yeah, I think now is as good a time as any to look towards these kind of knowledge bases when everything is being rethought and new normals are being established. I think yeah. looking towards the people that are studying these things in depth is a, is fantastic advice and I would definitely uh, echo echo your sentiments. Uh, I guess uh, one last question from the chat before I let you go. I know you just came off another call, so you probably want to go get some lunch. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, which university is pioneering uh, this logistics related work or study? Uh, with, with specific, uh, uh, you can see it there. Which university uh, okay. is pioneering this? Um, well, I, I'm affiliated to the Erasmus University, so I would say that uh, that they're doing a good job there. Um, give me a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there are uh, multiple universities uh, are working on, on 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 logistics related work. So. Um, uh, for example, uh, synchromodal transport, that's that's really uh, booming in, in the Netherlands. And, and I think we are quite a step ahead uh, with this topic. Um, but also in respect to sustainability, there are some some, some re real interesting uh, stuff that's taking place there. Uh, but if we I would approach it a bit broader in, in port-related uh, uh, research, then, then yeah. Uh, that that's across the globe. So we have uh, in in uh, in Europe, uh, uh, you have uh, the universities in in Antwerp and Hamburg also doing interesting uh, work, uh, but also in Singapore. So yeah, that that's and and in China there are also uh, several universities doing uh, good work on 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 port related uh, research. So it's 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 not that easy to say uh, who's doing what. Uh, uh, but um, a lot is done at least. So, so yeah, we, I think awesome. we can still uh, tap into a lot of uh, knowledge, which is uh, still un, uh, uncovered. Yeah, great. And we looked to, uh, to those universities. So for what comes out and now more than ever it's needed. So yeah. I just want to, again, thank you, Roy, for being here. I'm going to let you go and uh, get some food. You've been on call, I think, all morning. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you look hungry, so I'll let you go. Uh, thanks a million, guys, everyone, for, for attending. Uh, this was fantastic. This was really good for me as well. Uh, I always love, you know, speaking to people as knowledgeable as you. I mean, it's a fantastic experience for me. So maybe at some point in the future, in a few months, when there's some more stability, we can have you back on and we can talk some more about the, the current situation and when there's a bit more clarity, uh, more towards digitalization. Maybe in a few months' time, digital tools have been implemented more and you can speak to you know the management of those rather than the, the implementation so again thanks everyone for being here uh, Roy if you have any final words you want to, to leave with I, I, I'll pass it over to you but other than that then I just want to thank you so much for, for being here yeah so so uh, 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 my pleasure and uh, yeah, great that uh, that so many people uh, uh, joined uh, this uh, this webinar uh, and uh, if there are any further questions I would be happy to uh, take them uh, at another time and uh, uh, yeah, that's also a really nice experience for me to to do this. So uh, I'm happy to uh, to be able to contribute. Fantastic. I'm going to leave a, a, an email uh, in the chat, guys, just now before you leave. So if you have any follow-up questions that we didn't get to, or if you think of anything after the fact, you can email uh, events at cocoport.com. Hey.